Hello! In this video, I will share with you the format as well as some handy tips for SPM novels. Before we begin, my dear viewers, I really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my video by clicking the subscribe button and then like my video if you like if you really like my video by clicking the like button as well as sharing my video with your friends by clicking the share button in this video we will first look at the format of novel question in paper 2 followed by the marking scheme in general before we look at the important elements of a novel followed by some study tips and the last one will be exam tips just for you the format novel question can be found in section d question number 33 in paper 2 the question usually is one general question that touches on an issue shared by three different novels. As you may already know, there are three novels throughout Malaysia, which are Captain Nobody by Dean Pitchford, Dear Mr. Kilmer by Anne Shraff, and Sing to the Dawn by Min Fong Ho. Let's look at the question layout. For any novel question, this is how novel question will look like. Doesn't matter which SPM year, this is always the layout. Now let's look at the questions closely. This part that I highlight in blue, in the blue box, is an instruction. Right? Another one is this one. Choose any one of the novels above. These are instructions. This part in yellow is actually the list of novels to choose from. So you do not need to worry about remembering the name of the author, how to spell the name of the author, because the title of the novel as well as the name of the author are always given in the question. However, of course, if you have been answering so many questions, how can you not know the name of the novel as well as the author? Right. So, next. Let's see. This part where I put it in red box, this is actually the real question. Okay? This is actually the real question. And the last part here, in yellow, this is the marks given, which is... 15 marks. Let's look at the marking scheme. For novel questions, there are 15 marks allocated. 15 marks is quite a lot. These 15 marks are further divided into two. The first 10 marks are for response, and the next 5 marks are for language. Mind you, for novel question, there is no specific marking scheme. Meaning to say, there is no specific content points like summary questions. Remember, for summary, 10 marks are for content points because you can find content points in the comprehension text. However, for, for novel question, there is no such thing. Novel question is an open question. You can answer whatever you like and it cannot be wrong as long as your answer is based on the novel and you have evidence from the novel to support your answer. So, if novel question does not have specific marking scheme, what do we have? We have marking rubrics and it looks like this this is how the marking rubric looks like basically you will get zero if you don't answer of course you leave blank 
zero marks for you. To be honest, English subject is not easy to fail unless you leave blanks and do not answer. For any answer given, you will get at least one mark. Right? So one or two mark if you answer something and they are totally unrelated. Not totally unrelated, I mean you do not describe. You still can get one or two marks. But of course, that is not your target. Your target is to get at least six, seven, eight marks for response. And seven or eight is quite a high mark. It's not easy to get, but it's not that difficult to get actually. Right? So for this marking, how you can get them, you can find more examples and explanation about this in the upcoming videos. Yes, I have divided this novel answering techniques into several videos. There are quite a number of important elements in a novel. For example, we have characters, characteristics, plot, settings, theme, moral values, and literary devices. So these are the elements or components for novel, as suggested by many reference books. But are these really all the important ones? Do you really need to study all this? You might think that there are too many things to memorize. You do not know where to begin. And it's almost impossible to memorize everything, right? So let's see. This video will pinpoint the, the really important parts of a novel. Study novel for SPM question these are actually the real important elements. Let's see. Characters and characteristics. Themes and moral values. And the last one is plot, or we call it important events or incidents. Right? In BM, we, you call it peristiwa. So, characters and characteristics, themes and moral values these elements must always stay together, right? You cannot study one without studying the other one. So, if you learn about character, you must know what kind of characteristics the character has. And if you want, if you know theme, you need to know moral values. I will explain about this later, right? So, there are three things, three parts of the novel that you need to master. So you must know and master each of these elements before you can answer novel question. Let's look at the first elements, which are characters and characteristics. So what are characters and characteristics? Characters are wata atau character whereas characteristics are perwatakan atau sifat kepada watak character tersebut right for characters they must be proper nouns because it's the name of people name of persons for example in captain nobody we have newt or newton newman in Dear Mr. Kilmer, we have Richard Knight. And in Sing to the Dawn, we have Dawan. Whereas characteristics are always adjectives. For example, brave, caring, and determined. The next elements that you need to know the difference are themes and moral values. Themes are tema atau topik utama sesuatu cerita. Whereas moral values are nilai-nilai murni. Please do not be confused 
with BM. Whatever you learn in BM is in BM, right? A novel bahasa Melayu Komsas tidak sama dengan English literature. Okay, so okay, let's continue. Right, so what are themes and what are moral values? Themes are usually word or short phrase. For example, friendship, prejudice, or longer phrase is like bravery to stand up for what is right. Whereas moral values are more imperative. Okay, imperative means like memberi arahan. Okay, so because moral values are imperative, memberi arahan, so the sentences must start with we must, we should not, we should, right? It's like we are telling people what to do. Let's look at example number two. Okay, example number two is prejudice. Prejudice is a negative theme. Okay, if the theme is negative, we should not tell people to do it. Instead, we tell that they should not do it. Now that you know the difference between characters and characteristics as well as themes and moral values, let's look at some important study tips. SPM novel questions can be divided into three different kinds. The first one usually focuses on characters and characteristics only, or it may focus on themes or moral values, and the most popular question is freestyle. There is, uh, it does not focus on either character characteristics or themes and moral values. It's freestyle. So, SPM novel questions always revolve around characteristics, themes, or moral values, right? Which are shared between the three different novels. So, if your novel, the novel that you study, does not have the issue cannot be found in different in the other novel. For example, let's say uh, you study Sing to the Dawn, right? And it talks a lot about family, for example. Okay, but let's say this uh, issue about family cannot be found in uh, Dear Mr. Kilmer or Captain Nobody, then that question, that issue most probably will not be asked. Right? I said, for example, of course, family is an issue that can be found throughout all three novels. So, characteristics, themes, and moral values. These are the three things that you need to know. Right? That you need to know because these are the things that SPM novel questions always ask about. So, how do you do revision for novel? Let's look at the most important thing. The most important thing is to know the plot of your novel. Why? Because when you know the plot, you will know the characters. You will know who is the main character, who are the supporting characters. For example, in the Mr. Kilmer, the main character is Richard Knight. And the supporting characters are Hannah Shermer, Mrs. Hansen, um, just to name a few, right? So you know the main, uh, you know the characters, as well as their relationships. For example, Richard Knight and Hannah Shermer are friends, okay? And you will also learn about their problems. For example, Richard Knight. And Hannah Schirmer, at first, they have some problems, but later on, they become friends. So, by knowing the characters, their relationships, and their problems will help you to better understand the themes and the moral values of the novel. For your information, 
The plot of every novel can be broken down into a number of events or incidents. There are two types of events in most novels. The first one is the events define the main characters. And the second one is the event changes the main characters. What are events that define the main characters? These events or incidents usually seem unimportant or minor. Nampak macam tak penting je. Alright? The event may describe the main character doing an activity or interacting with other characters. Nothing big happened. Just the main character doing uh, everyday chores or just talking with other characters. Well, it may seem unimportant or minor, but these simple events actually can identify the character's characteristics. For example, in Dear Mr. Kilmer, in the first chapter, Richard Knight, we can see Richard Knight helping his sister doing chores at home. From that simple event, we can see or we can tell that Richard is helpful. He loves to help his sister. Right? So, character defining events are just the small, small details in the novel. Think of a movie. Think of a drama on TV. The first parts, the first few minutes or the first episodes usually are a bit boring because this is where they build the plot. Right? To build the plot, you must know the character. So, they define the character by showing the characters doing certain things. Right? So, these are character defining events. Next is the events that change the characters. Okay? The main characters. Okay? Uh, these events are usually the major events or incidents in the novel. The event usually describes the main character making an important decision. Right? So, the main character usually makes an important decision. This decision usually will affect his or her life as well as the other characters around him or her. For example, in Dear Mr. Kilmer, one of the character-changing events is when Richard decided to share his poems with other people. Right? When he shared his poem with other people, then you can see that his life changed by, uh, by the responses he received from other characters. That is just an example. And in every novel, usually there will be more than one character changing events. And you need to know them all. The next revision tips is about the plot. You must know everything that happened in the novel. From the start of the novel until the end of the novel, you must know everything. And this includes the characters involved. Remember, every novel has, every novel has many characters. One or two main characters and quite a number of supporting characters. And you should know them all. And you must know their action as well, what they did in the novel. Right? Studying the plot is not about memorizing what happened. It's no use if you memorize what happened in the novel, but you don't understand it. So that's why doing revision about uh, on the plot is about understanding what happened and why it happened. 
as well as the consequences on the characters. Okay, let me uh, translate in BM. Kamu perlu faham apa yang berlaku. Yang pertama, what happened, apa yang berlaku. Yang kedua, kenapa ianya berlaku. So, what triggers the event. Okay, apa punca berlakunya perbuatan tersebut. And the last one is the consequences on the characters. Dan apakah kesan perbuatan tersebut terhadap watak-watak di dalam novel. When doing revision on the plot, you must remember for major events. Remember earlier we uh, we talk about character changing events. You must know at least two major ev major events for character defining events or minor events. You must know at least four. Now let's look at how to do revisions for characters. Always focus on the main characters. Some novels may have more than one main character. If your novel only has one main character, then by all means, focus on that main character. Why? Because there are more things to talk about the main characters as they appear more in the novel. For example, in Dear Mr. Kilmer, the main character is Richard Knight. From chapter 1 until chapter 10, you will always find Richard Knight doing many things. You cannot take the supporting characters. For example, her sister Angie. Her sister Angie only appears in chapter 1 and chapter 3, if I'm not mistaken. Only one or two chapters. And only a or only appear in like one or two pages and that's it right even the 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 villains right the bad characters they don't appear as much as the main character so always focus on the main characters another reason to focus on the main characters is because they are dynamic meaning they undergo changes throughout the novel you know, maybe at the start of the novel, they are not confident, right? After a few things that happen to them, later on, they become more confident. Maybe they were afraid at the start of the novel, but later on, they found courage. So, because they are dynamic, they have more characteristics. And if a character has a lot of characteristics, meaning to say, we can talk a lot about them. Okay. Okay. Next, this is an important advice. Do not focus only on positive traits. Traits meaning characteristics. Okay. Do not focus only on positive traits. Why? Because the main character is not a saint, so he or she must have weaknesses too. Nobody is perfect, remember? So, the, even the main character, they must have done things that other people, other characters, or even us as the readers, that we do not like. And this is also because some SPM questions have asked negative questions. For example, you may refer to SPM novel question 2012. It asks about N event that makes you angry okay or in 2019 which is last year it asks about a character that you dislike imagine question 2019 about a character that you dislike let's say you choose the villain how much can you talk about the villains not much right but if you choose the main character, you can talk a lot about him or her, right? So, always choose main character, but do not focus only on positive traits. 
also look at their negative characteristics. To do revision on themes, you should find recurring issues. Recurring means repeated, yang berulang. Meaning, that issue can be found at the start of the novel, somewhere in the middle, or maybe throughout the novel, right? Novels usually have more than one recurring issue. And sometimes, an issue can be viewed from many different perspectives, which will give more than one theme. As for moral values, Moral values are the lessons or pengajaran that we learn from the themes. Moral values are imperative dalam bentuk arahan. So that the sentences must begin with we must, we should, we have to. If let's say the theme is about bravery, okay, bravery, berani. So, the moral value is we must be brave. Okay? Let's look at some additional tips. When doing revision, do not ever separate characters and characteristics. Also, do not separate theme from moral values. I've said this before. Some reference books they give separate and different theme and moral values. That is not right. Well, it's not wrong, but then it's not right for you to do revision. It's easier if you study theme and moral values together. As I said earlier, if let's say the theme is about bravery, then the moral values is we must be brave. If the theme is about discrimination, Penindasan. Then the moral values is, is we should not discriminate. Isn't it easier to study like that? Right? Rather than uh, in some reference books, they give a list of themes and then a list of moral values and they are not even related. And you must Always know which events or incidents that can be evidence for what you are talking about. Now that we're done with study tips, let's look at exam tips. The first tip is to keep your answer organized. How do you do that? By writing your answers in many paragraphs. Remember, novel question is not summary question. Only summary question is answered in one paragraph. For novel, it is always best to keep it in essay format. Meaning to say, your essay, your answer should have introduction and then it has bodies, it has conclusion. The next one is to arrange your ideas from strongest point to the weakest point. So, a well-organized answer will, ha will help the examiner to find the points and evidences in the text. You must remember, when you make the examiner's life easy, your examiners will have mercy on you. Look at exam tips number two. Exam tip number two is to be as detailed as possible. How? By mentioning the names of all the characters involved or the specific places where an event happened. Use important keywords directly quoted from the novel if that is possible. To be as detailed as possible when you are answering the novel, think of it this way. When you are answering, do not think... Okay, the problem with students answering novel question is this. When they answer, they will think like this. Alah, takkanlah pemeriksa tak tahu. 
Takkanlah pemeriksa tak faham. No. Try to think as if the examiner knows nothing. That's how you be as detailed as possible. Right? It's like you are telling something. You are telling a story to your friend and your friend does not know about it. You have to be detailed. Right? Cerita semua detail yang ada. Right? Tell them as many, as much details as possible. Now, the third and the last exam tips. But I've said it before. Which is to make the marker's life easy. Actually, this is the most important part of all. Not just for English novel. This is for any subject, every subject. Because if you make the marker's life, the examiner's life easy, then they will, by God's will, have mercy on your paper. But how do you make their life easy? Right? First one is to keep your handwriting neat and tidy. The thing is, some ugly handwritings make the examiner's life very difficult because some handwritings are so difficult to read. So please keep your handwriting neat and tidy. And the next one is never use correction liquid or tape. The problem with correction liquid or tape is that sometimes when you use it, if you don't use it properly, then whatever you try to hide might be revealed and it will make it difficult for examiners to read your answer. Okay, so please try to avoid using correction liquid or tape. The best way to do it is simply crossing the answers that you do not want. Right? You cross whatever you don't like, whatever you do not want uh, the examiners to read, and then write on top of it or next to it. Right? Reminder. Yes, I know. Some people have ugly handwriting. To be honest, I have ugly handwriting too. But the thing is, ugly handwriting is okay. As long as it is readable. Biar tulisan buruk tetapi boleh dibaca. Some people have beautiful handwriting but it's not easy to read their handwriting. So please, keep your handwriting readable. So folks, actually that is all for this, for this video. But what snacks? There are three more parts of this video. I mean, there will be three more videos after this video. So part two is about analyzing the questions, how to analyze the questions. And part three is the answering techniques, how to organize your answer. And part four is sample novel answers. So I will try to show you some sample novel answers. So stay tuned and as I said, please subscribe to my channel, like my videos and please make prayers for me that I will have more motivation and time to proceed and continue with the upcoming videos. So that's all folks and all the best for SPM. Bye!